I had a very beautiful childhood. I used to walk up a trail that was, oh goodness, maybe three kilometers long. Walk up, you know, check my traps along the shoreline, come out at the rapids and then come home. That's what I did as a kid. We were safe out there. We're not safe here in town, but we're safe out there in the bush. out in the land, being part of it, it grounds me, it resets me, decompresses me, because that's my comfort zone. The Ojibwe people were traditionally hunters and gatherers. And within a very short amount of time, I'm talking within the past 100 years, our lifestyle has completely changed. But that doesn't mean your genetics can change that fast. My grandfather, for example, and he passed away in 1983, um, and he was 109 years old. And that's from working on and being on the land all his life. My mother right now is going to be 90 this year. She's... It's good. Peja que tu sabe no caso. Mas tu sabe na gemente. Tu só se vou que ele vem, né? Vou vou que ele coca, né? She still does her own wood. That's what eating traditional food does for us. Vamos chegar? Não. Nem tu But back in 1988, there were five uh, protesters. Um, they stopped eating because of the horrible health conditions in, in northwestern Ontario at the time. So all the leadership in this area, the federal government, the provincial government, the municipality of Sulakot, and then the First Nations people, they, um, they moved to make changes until they finally established the Sulkut Minoyawan Health Center. And then our uh, Meechim program. The word Meechim is an Ojibwe word. It means food. The program was developed so we can serve uninspected wild meat and game to patients who want a Meechim meal which is, it's very, very unique because it's very heavily regulated. When the program started, a bunch of Kokums, grandmothers, from the northern communities were uh, brought down and they developed this Kokums cookbook. There's no preservatives, there's no additives, sugar or anything like that that's harmful to us. We're able to serve moose, caribou, deer, Beaver, partridge, rabbits, wild rice, blueberries, whatever we can get. And all, all of that is uh, donated. The majority of our patients come from um, one of the northern communities. They need care that's based on... Bonjour. Empathy that's based on understanding. It's because for too long we've been without, and it's a welcome change. Uh -huh. 
We nan chicken wa bunk. Uh-huh. Get out should be with this um should be at this now. Uh-huh. And you know, when you look at holistic care, so if you're sick physically, uh-huh. you're sick spiritually as well. Bringing traditional food or traditional plate to somebody can make somebody forget their situation for just a brief moment. <laughs> And a lot of people in this world, they eat to make themselves happy. When well, this case, they're eating something that's culturally normal for them. It makes them happy. This program is very much supported. That's right from the board to the CEO to all the directors. So one of the questions that we asked on the Meet Your Meals uh, survey was, would people want it more often if it was if it was offered? And we got an 88.6% uh, response rate on that. Yeah, we are now serving two meals per week as of today. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. really good. That's Everybody has to be committed along the way. And they all have to work together because it's not a one person job. It takes a whole team, it takes a whole hospital to do this. People have to not just say that they want to do reconciliation, whatever that might mean, right? They actually have to do it. Food is a good start. And the reason being is everybody eats food. And through food is culture. different cultures in this world. They should be allowed to eat their own food, especially when they're vulnerable.